Guys, it's just so disgusting. We were extorted by the customs in Senegal, Africa again. The situation unfolded when a young man from China was departing from Senegal in West Africa. Upon entry, he indeed did not need a visa, but when he arrived at the exit checkpoint, Senegalese staff charged him a visa fee of 50 euros for the reason that. Because you didn't have a visa, you need to make up for it now. Isn't it said that Senegal offers visa-free access for Chinese citizens? With no other choice and a flight to catch, the young man reluctantly paid the 50 euros, boarded the bus to the plane, and was seething with anger. The more I think about it, the angrier I get. I am really holding it all in. At this year's two sessions in China, members of the National Committee of Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. Dai Bing stated, "Our country has signed visa exemption agreements with 150 countries. The value of the Chinese passport is increasing, and the number of travel destinations where you can just pack up and go is also growing." Upon hearing this, Chinese citizens were eager to test the true value of their Chinese passports. The video clips above are first-hand experiences of Chinese citizens at the airports of one of the 150 visa-free countries mentioned by the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference (CPPCC). Another Chinese tourist also went to Senegal and posted a video at the airport. A disgusting incident just happened. We had checked online beforehand. Senegal offers visa-free entry for our Chinese passports, but the visa officer still asked us to pay 50 euros for a visa. The officer said, "What is said online doesn't count." In Southeast Asia, a Chinese traveler named Ali encountered a similar situation. This travel enthusiast, believing the words of the CPP CC that Chinese passport can gain visa-free entry to 150 countries, thought that it must certainly include Malaysia. So one day in March, while Ali was traveling in Thailand, he decided to enter Malaysia via a land border crossing by bike, intending to get a visa on arrival. We're about to enter Malaysia, currently at Sungai Kolok, a border town in Thailand. We'll bring our passports and process the departure procedures from Thailand in the hall. We're about to enter the immigration area of Malaysia. Let's apply for a visa on arrival. Oh no, friends! I can't apply for the visa on arrival. They won't let me pass without a visa. Originally, Ali planned to wait for the e-visa at the Malaysian border and then enter. However, he was unexpectedly deported by Malaysian customs and had no choice but to return to Thailand. I was deported and given a rejection stamp. I can't even enter through the border tomorrow. Let's buy a beer to drown our sorrows. Later, Ali's e visa was approved, and he entered Malaysia by waterway. Another traveler who was fortunate enough to become a representative of a foreign trade company two years before the pandemic frequently travels abroad. However, every time he presents his passport, he faces difficulties, even in countries that offer visa-free entry for Chinese passports. Despite these countries being partners in China's Belt and Road Initiative, they do not recognize visa-free entry upon seeing a Chinese passport. Meanwhile, Korean visitors get through easily. The claim by the CPPCC members that Chinese passport allow visa-free entry to over 150 countries was scrutinized by netizens. They discovered that Chinese netizens sarcastically commented that they need to scrutinize good news more carefully in the future. There's another story about Chinese passports. The Chinese government constantly promotes domestically that Chinese people are standing tall now, and that foreigners dare not bully you as long as you hold a Chinese passport. This is a phrase often used by the spokesperson of China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. However, this claim does not match reality. This claim doesn't match reality. Recently, a popular Chinese influencer experienced a stark contrast to the government's propaganda while traveling abroad. Upon revealing his Chinese nationality, all his luggage was inspected. The influencer was furious. He said, "I am extremely angry now. I didn't expect us Chinese people abroad to be bullied to such an extent, completely overturning our previous perceptions."
All the Chinese people exiting are now also being asked to open their luggage. Let's watch this footage filmed by Chinese influencer abroad, specifically in Tanzania. All the Chinese passport holders at this exit are now being asked to open their luggage. All the luggage is thoroughly checked. Basically, they just want money, 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 money. Here at the check, they list a long tally of things. All need to be taxed. As long as you pass through this place, you're bound to be fleeced. The influencer sarcastically says, Our Chinese faces need to be passports for giving money to the world. It's too much. I'm just about to explode with anger. The influencer ordeal once uploaded to the internet sparked heated discussions among overseas Chinese communities as they face similar situations in many countries. Some netizens commented that this is indeed too much. Are Chinese people commodities? Why is it that whenever they see a Chinese person, they need to inspect their luggage? Are Chinese people so easy to bully? However, the reality is Chinese people are often treated this way. Another netizen shared the experience of honeymooning in Africa, where they had to constantly pay extra charges and fees simply because they held a Chinese passport. Once they ran into trouble, they had a quick thought and claimed to be Taiwanese instead, which was met with a smile from the police officer. Another traveller shared their experiences travelling to several so-called friendly countries. They said everything was fine until officials saw their passport and then it was all about opening their luggage and paying various fees. Hang on, this isn't right. Didn't the Chinese president state in a video? Now, the Chinese people have been organized and are not to be trifled with. It would be troublesome if they were upset. Could it be that what the Chinese president said was untrue? And is it true that Chinese people are easily bullied abroad? Yes, this is indeed the reality. So why do Chinese people find themselves in such an unfortunate situation? This is actually closely related to the upbringing and education of the Chinese. Under the rule of the Communist Party, people have long been instilled with the idea of unconditional obedience to authority and blind trust in superiors. Whether in schools, workplaces, or even in families, Chinese people are taught to respect authority, follow commands, and not to resist in the slightest. In such an environment, people are trained to be tolerant and compromising. When facing unfair treatment, Chinese people often choose to remain silent and endure, instead of standing up for their rights. They fear that resistance will bring more trouble and that confrontation will make them a target. Therefore, Chinese people choose to compromise and endure. The mindset of tolerance and compromise is largely shaped by the brainwashing education of the Communist Party. For a long time, the party has used various means to make people accept and obey its authority, making people believe that tolerance and compromise are the best solution to problems. This mindset ultimately leads to the weakness and powerlessness of Chinese people when facing foreigners. That's why even abroad Chinese people often encounter bullying and difficulties because their mindset and behavior have been seen through by others. They know that as long as they put some pressure on Chinese people, they will choose to compromise, pay to solve problems and will not choose to resist. This mindset is a product of the rule of the Communist Party and is caused by the party's culture of the Communist Party. Chinese people must recognize this clearly in order to truly change their destiny and truly gain dignity and freedom.